We are going to discuss about uh, collaboration. And one of the best way to discuss about collaboration is maybe to look at the biggest things in the world, where collaboration really makes sense, when it made a difference. So today, we are going to take the ISS, the International Space Station, as an example. This is the biggest object ever built out of the Earth. It is 110 meters long, 420 tons that we had to bring in space. The International Space Station is probably, as I said, the best example of collaboration. And we will see, thanks to this example, and later on we will see how it applies to our industry, how collaboration can bring value to all of the participants. Why it is better to be all together. In terms of cost, the International uh, Space Station total cost, including maintenance, is around 150 billion USD. Ronald Reagan tried to launch this project in 83, realizing that it was a big amount even for the, the, the US. So we had to wait the collapse of the USSR, and then in, in 98, in 1998, the project was started. So this, is, this year is the 67th anniversary of the NASA and the um, 20th anniversary of the ISS. The ISS, thanks to this collaboration, is huge. This is big. This is as big as a Boeing 747 inside. Thanks to this, 350 astronauts were able to live in space in a constant presence for 30, 17 years. So the cost was important. You cannot do that alone. The transparency of the project is a, a model in the industry. All of the um, stakeholders of the ISS, Russia, USA, China, Europe, Japan, were together and defining a neutral manner to govern the ISS. All of the scientists in the world sent their project to the ISS program. Some, um, a college of uh, scientists select the project, the best technicians uh, prepare the experiences and the astronauts are trained on this. So this is extremely neutral and most important, all of the results of the ISS are considered as public for um, universities and for uh, private applications. So this is a com common framework of a big baseline that allow innovation and even private patents on top of it later on. So the resilience of the ISS. Can you imagine that what happens today in ISS? Everyone will die. So this is not possible in ISS. The resilience is critical. For that, the standards are very high. All of the countries can bring uh, components, and all of these, all of these components are, can be moved from one country to the other one. Japan uh, module can be exchanged with a uh, Russian module. Example of resilience is not only on technical aspects. When uh, the shuttles had dramatic accidents, Columbia, Challenger, US has stopped to uh, send astronauts in space. But it was business as usual for the ISS because of, thanks to all of the standards, the Soyuz, the Russian Soyuz, take over and then was able to continue to send as planned the astronauts. And this is open standard, so new entrants can, uh, can come. SpaceX will start to send US astronauts next year. They just read the specification of ISS and they are new entrants in the business. The innovation, innovation is critical, of course. We are not doing that for nothing. So many thousands of experiments were done in ISS. And the most important part is about human ast uh, astronomy, physics. So for example, uh, some research in, in DNA exposed to the uh, outside of the ISS proves that life could come from uh, other planets. Or, for example, studies on the behavior of the, of the human bones and muscles leads to research and find new cures for osteoporosis. Also, crystals, when you are in a microgravity environment, crystals can grow in a unique manner. So protein crystals developed in ISS are now used as bases for new medicines. We have many examples, like a flame in space. The combustion in a flame is just a kind of circle in space. Thanks to these effects and mastering completely the chemical of a flame in space, we have uh, reduced combustion in uh, car engines. So now it's more efficient uh, for car engines. And all of these results 
again, are transparent and are used as basis. All of the world move up in terms of research, but private applications still allow differentiation between all of the partners. So Corinne, as our expert, is participating to many of the groups. So um, do we see some example of cost efficiency with collaborating all together with ATPCO? So yes, definitely. Um, last time I checked the ATPCO website, built in 18254 was the most recent release. So for those who are not familiar with ATPCO process, it means that 254 releases uh, and built in were sent and reported to us um, since the 1st of January this year. So if you do the math, on average, ATPCO is talking to us and reporting to us every single working day and more than that. So if you add to this the number of um, business requirements and the dozens of mandates that we have to implement each year, I think we have 47 for next year, that represents a significant effort and investment from us all. So it is critical that we get organized. We've all dreamed about ancillary services offered a la carte, but this does not fly with industry mandates. It cannot be industry mandates a la carte. It's true that um, the, the main benefit of the standards is the confidence that you can have on the targeted product or service. If we don't want to reduce the value of the standard, we cannot afford any miscompliance or misalignment between us. This would lead to inconsistencies in processing logic and therefore unexpected results at the end. So in the advisory council with ATPCO as neutral facilitator, airlines, systems and technology partners are working together to identify solutions such as process update to improve the time to market. We are looking together at industry trends and customer trends so that we identify the right priorities to work on. And we are doing collaborative priority setting. And with such an approach, we can set goals to enable new capabilities and actually um, define and work and focus on the right priorities. This, as a result, save costs and create efficiency for all players. So with industry priorities rightly defined, we're on the safe side to enable changes to the standards. And beyond this, with synchronized execution of this by all the systems, we can make benefits. Thank you. So we are efficient, and um, every dollar spent is a uh, right spent. Um, about transparency, that sometimes we can, we can challenge. Do we see some um, transparency in what we do? Yes, I think transparency um, or efforts are stepping up. And whether we like it or not, we must acknowledge that there is a benefit in transparency. Those efforts could ease our work for both the airlines and the systems. So let's take an example, the tax community. Correct tax, tax application is a must. Correct as in accurate and consistent across systems. So with systems agreeing to share their experience in the migration process with other systems, we learn from the others. And we can translate this into benefits. For instance, um, clarification or uh, improvement on the data application, and incorrect data or unintended data can be detected by the primary adopters on a given market and then shortly corrected for the other systems to come. And this, once again, uh, save costs and even speed up the timeline for the migration. I think another example is maybe the first task force because the two main business drivers for that were to support ADT in public fair parallel tariff and to have additional level of uh, dynamic fare for promotion campaigns. But beyond this, um, we, we are also looking at um, I think maybe this is not the right example. Let's take another one. The Committee of Differences. So the Committee of Differences. Securing an alignment between us is the best way for us to um, get maximum revenue from our investment. It's been a while since ATPCO has started developing its collection and distribution services for airline content. We all know this has gotten incredibly rich and more and more complex. So it doesn't come as a surprise that we have 
outstanding issues between systems. And the Committee of Difference is actually working on this, solving issues and um, enabling all the systems to be aligned within us. So it is a little bit ironic for me to be on stage talking about the Committee of Differences because ATPCO has actually identified Amazeus as the first dissident on <laughs> Orbit Chart 2, but on the positive side, and because this is now solved, we can proudly say that we were the first one to meet the challenge and close the gap. So back to the Committee of Differences, it starts with experts uh, looking at the reported issue. Then we do and discuss together to understand the situation. We work on resolving those issues or even conflicts that could compromise the successful alignment. Then we agree and, uh, on the way to move forward to eliminate this and finally impacted systems are committing to implement the change. So as a bottom line, I would say that if we all agree to be transparent on our compliance, on non-compliance to the standards, it's the whole ecosystem that will progress in an understanding where we stand, um, enabling expected capabilities, and finally getting our money back from our investment. Yes, this is one of the aspects that I think moved uh, a lot in the last years. Before that, each of us was thinking that we have to keep our secrets and our processing, and we saw this benefit um, with the Committee of Differences that we have a change of culture. When we are in ATPC working group, we hold together, uh, think about this is a common framework. We can differentiate on product on top, but the ATPC part is a standard, so let's discuss. And we are a bit transparent. Even the implementation uh, that on mandates is uh, publicly uh, uh, you can look at internet and look at each system or if it has been implemented or not. I think this is a good evolution. So the resilience, um, this is probably quite important. Tom mentioned the six billion, uh, the 600 billion uh, revenues for 30 billion uh, 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 net income of uh, airlines worldwide. So it's extremely important to be resilient. So uh, beyond what ATPCO is doing on this system, in the, in the forums we is there any aspects that improve the resilience of our industry? Okay, so first, resilience, I think, is to be understood in our context as the ability for a system to secure an acceptable level of uh, service when facing faults and challenges to normal operation. This is maybe not as essential uh, as, say, the air traffic networks, yet we are having some initiatives together as an industry group to improve our resilience in our shared services. I think managing the content becomes critical um, because of the, the increasing number of offers that we want to manage, including diversity in all products. But at the same time, consumer behaviors evolve. Consumers are now perceiving the value of an offer at any given moment. So we have to deal with an increasing use of online channels for searching and booking the use of multiple devices to do so, and even the growing importance of social media. So any error or failure within that context can quickly create a butterfly effect. So we have to get prepared for that, and it has to happen at all steps. If we look at the suppression of sales project, this project aims, for instance, at recovering as quickly as possible any incorrect data filing. You will have instant cancel with Sunday Effective to correct market errors and, 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 and be really uh, reactive on this. And now maybe the task force, uh, the first task force is something we can consider because as I said, there were business requirements behind this, but beyond this, we've been considering performance and volume aspects to ensure that the process is actually sustainable. So again, um, as a group, we are joining forces so that we can have an iterative approach and being agile in the way we define the objective and the scope. And as we've seen this afternoon, I think it was a good example, we have to get prepared because we should not consider that failure should not happen. Failure will happen, that's for sure. And this is maybe a question of mindset, but we have to be prepared for that. Okay, so we are quite cost efficient, we are, um, thanks to the collaboration, we are resilient, etc. It looks like very nice legacy stuff. So, 
can we also innovate together? Or is it just something that we have to do on our, alone on each side? Is there any benefit? Do we already have some initiative for innovation where the collaboration around ATPCO is effective? So I think there are many ways for companies and organizations to solve um, issue and innovate. This happens naturally within an organization. But collaborating with industry leaders, partners, or even competitors is actually the way towards creating new products, new services, and new business solutions. When preparing this presentation, I've been thinking about every conversation I have had, every industry uh, meeting I have attended with some of you in this room, and among all the subjects that relate to dynamic pricing, to, to innovation, I think dynamic pricing is one to mention to show the benefits of our collaboration. So the dynamic pricing working group was established in early 2016. The starting point was that we are all doing in our own company, working on the science behind dynamic pricing. But executing this science, deploying it across all channels, while doing it in a way that maximizes the revenue for the airline is the challenge. And the way we solve this challenge will determine the evolution of dynamic pricing and personalized and contextualized um, offer creation. Well, th this group was and remains a multidisciplinary group. We had people from revenue management, inventory, shopping and pricing, revenue accounting, even the legal aspects were covered. For instance, but we, we are having a lot of changes. Let's think about what we are doing right now. We are trying to move from continuous pricing static pricing to continuous pricing, RBD base to product base. We are trying to move from seat optimization to bundle optimization. So for most of this area, what is quite clear is that the, they have been relatively independent, but the traditional way is changing and expanding. And if those groups have been relatively independent, now they need to work together to gently optimize the offer being sold. I think we've, as an industry group, we've been working on identifying the necessary changes to the messages, to the processing, to make this happen. And as part of the results, we had some pilots, some recommendations, uh, some possible approaches to enable dynamic pricing. And doing this, on the path toward NDC, we've been opening the GDS to external dynamic pricing engine. And with such innovation, we now become better at shaping the offer in real time. And as a last presentation or last example for my part, I would like to mention the work that has been conducted by British Airways, Finnair, ATPCO, and Amadeus to identify solutions for hybrid interline in NDC. So one of the challenge of NDC, and there are many others to come, but hybrid interline is basically when an NDC-capable airline, acting as the responsible airline, wants to use fares from another carrier without cascading any call in real time. So together, we've been working on a solution, or at least a draft of the solution. We've been presenting it to the industry until the idea got finally endorsed by the industry group as a viable solution. And for me today, this is definitely the opportunity to thank some of you in this room for the great work we've done together. Um, Deirdre from British Airways, Melanie from ATPCO, Sierpa, I think she's not there, and some of us in the room. Uh, thank you for this great time. I'm definitely looking forward to another year of successful collaboration because we do have examples of successful collaboration and we need to continue this. Thank you, Corinne. So, we, we, as we saw, we are not so different from uh, the biggest project. We are the biggest uh, industry in the world. The travel industry is the biggest industry. So we need uh, collaboration. We are by nature collaboration, by interline or uh, working together with different countries. So we have to do that. And we need a neutral place to be able to discuss, innovate together, even with the competitors. So thank you very much. I hope that you have some idea of the ISS today, some figures maybe. And uh, we are looking to discuss with you on other topics.
and maybe selling you something uh, next time. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Back to Earth and back to the hotel now. Thank you.